Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. An internet is a private network, which is heavily protected by many different networking devices, such as router, firewall, proxy server, DMZ, HoneyNet. IPS and IDS. This diagram is an overly simplified version of the reality. I try to put these devices together in a reasonable order, only for teaching and learning purpose. IDS stands for Intrusion Detection System. The system is often deployed on the network close to the perimeter. It's very much like a CCTV camera above a business entrance or sensors on its doors. IDS is a passive system that scans incoming traffic. Once the IDS identified a dangerous or suspicious traffic, it can send alerts but leaves the action to IPS. IPS stands for Intrusion Prevention System. Unlike IDS, IPS is able to actively block or prevent intrusions. It means IPS takes action. 1. Inspection and Investigation Inspection can include signature-based inspection and statistical anomaly-based inspection. Investigation includes analyzing suspicious packets and activities. 2. Action. Once unwelcomed packets are identified, IPS would either put them in quarantine or simply drop them. 3. Logs and reports. Like many security devices, IPS can log attacks and send reports. Keep in mind, IDS and IPS are not necessarily two separate physical devices. They can be combined into one device. They can be also combined with other devices such as firewall, router, or proxy into a single device. Unified threat management and next generation firewalls are two examples. First of all, a HoneyNet is a real network composed of some real networking devices and real servers, which we call honeypots. A HoneyNet looks real and the honey pots appear legitimate. However, they work together as a trap or a baiting system mainly with two purposes. One, the setup of the honey net is intentionally vulnerable. The main purpose is inviting hackers to attack the system so that their hacking activities can be monitored, and their methods and patterns can be studied. Information could be valuable and helpful for the IT professionals to protect a real company internet. To some extent, honeypots can serve as lightweight intrusion detection systems. Two, a honey net is also used to deflect hackers from attacking a real internet and its resources. Once hackers thought they've got what they need, their attention could be diverted. DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. We borrow this term from Korean Demilitarized Zone. When the Korean War ended in 1953, a ceasefire agreement was signed and a DMZ was created. But anyway, according to this ceasefire agreement, 
within this buffer zone, no military troops, no weapons are deployed. In the networking world, DMZ is a lightly protected network. It is still a part of a company's local area network, but less protected than the internet where the critical and sensitive data is hosted. Why do we need a DMZ and what is its purpose? The answer is because we want to provide convenient and efficient services to the public users and we do not want to heavily control the traffic to the DMZ. Let's look at this example. Within this company's local area network, there are two areas or two parts. One area is heavily protected internet. The company does not want the internet users to access this part easily. The other part is DMZ, which is lightly protected area where the file servers or web servers are hosted. The company wants the public user to access this service easily and smoothly, like it wants as many public users as possible to access its web pages. If these servers are protected too much, the traffic to DMZ is restricted too much, the public users would be turned away. At the same time, the company still wants to make sure these servers are protected. The trade-off between security and convenience is DMZ. In summary, HoneyNet is a baiting network that purposely attracts and invites hackers. DMZ is a lightly protected network whose purpose is to provide a convenient public services to the internet users. They are part of a local area network with different purposes. A proxy server is a mediator between the external and internal networks, screening all incoming and outgoing traffic. A proxy server has at least five functions. One, a proxy server acts as an agent on behalf of its clients. When clients make requests to a web server, for example, the proxy server uses its own IP address to replace its client's IP address. When the page is returned, the proxy server forward it to the client. In this way, the proxy server hides IP addresses of its clients. This function is called Network Address Translation or NET. This NET function is more commonly performed by routers or firewalls. 2. Proxy server can act as a caching machine. For example, client A wants a latest version of Firefox. The proxy first checks its cache. Sorry, I haven't found it in my storage. Let me download a copy from the internet. The proxy server would go to the Mozilla website and download the software. Then it forwards a copy to the client A and keeps a copy in its cache. Next time when client B asks for the, a copy of Firefox, the proxy server checks its cache. Here you are, and this time the proxy would give the client B a copy directly from its cache without having go to the Mozilla website. Thus, it reduces network traffic and improves network performance. 3. Proxy servers can control traffic both inbound and outbound. 
For example, if a company pro prohibits its employees from going to some social media sites like Facebook or YouTube during the work hour, he can simply deploy a proxy server to control outbound traffic. This can be easy set up, simply blocking IP addresses of these social media sites. Number four, proxy servers can keep track all traffic, both outgoing and incoming. Last but not least, a proxy server can be set up to bypass the firewall. This function is very different from its normal setup I mentioned above. Here is the scenario. Suppose I'm sitting in my school office using my school private network, and I want to check my Facebook, but my school firewall blocks the Facebook site. I cannot connect with my friends, but I'm very determined and stubborn. So I go to buy a proxy server and install it in my garage and work day and night so that it functions properly. Now I come back to my school office again and use my school private network. This time I do not go to Facebook site directly. Instead, I log onto my proxy server in my garage and ask my proxy server to Facebook. And then my proxy server gets the Facebook. As long as my school does not block my proxy C server, I will have no problem with checking my Facebook through my proxy. This method is called bypassing the firewall or climbing over the grid wall. Keep in mind, there's many types of proxy servers with many different functions. I hope this video is helpful to understand the basics. Thank you very much and see you next time.